Welcome to the Spinner Rack with your hosts, Brian and Junior. Welcome back to issue 26 of the Spinner Rack. As always, I'm your host, Big B, Brian Adams, joined by my co-host. Junior, co-host of Comics Remixed. And Junior, if you would please introduce our guest via phone. Via phone, we've got... Who do we have on the phone? Ultraonomous. You want to describe yourself a little bit or tell the fans about yourself? Yes, I'm Ultraonomous. Junior's trying to do the same with Comics Remix. We're trying to hit 600? Right now, yeah, we're like 20-something away from we're 600. Really 600. But anyway, issue 26. We brought in this special guest. I uh, was kind of inspired by a debate on Comics Remix between Junior and Optimus about Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior. So issue 26, 80s wrestling, Hogan vs. the Warrior. All right. Go ahead, take it away, Junior. Now, a little bit of backstory about why we're doing this podcast. Um... Something about, uh, there, there was something we posted on Facebook about Hogan and the Warrior. I don't, do you remember exactly what it was, Prime? Um, there, there's a lot of stuff going on where... Like the, the initial post, the, the original post. Oh, there's a post, um, oh, I put a post up on Facebook because I just, I had recently seen a video that was recorded where the Warrior was getting interviewed and... That's what it was. That's right. All right, cool. You just sparked my memory. Thank you. Um, there was a video of uh, the Ultimate Warrior on uh, being interviewed by TMZ about some stuff, and uh, there was stuff supposedly that was that you don't get to see, and it was not supposed to be aired. Where Warrior was basically telling TMZ how it is that TMZ is a company that pretty much likes to exploit the people they interview. You mean the W? Wait. TMZ. My bad. TMZ, sorry. not WWE. Sorry, sorry. Because um, we all know TMZ is known for their uh, their controversial uh, coverings of whatever you know the the stars and stuff like that. So in the in the video, Warriors pretty much telling them how it is. It's like, you guys screw over a lot of people. You know, just make sure what I say gets put the way I say it. Don't you know change my stuff around and make me look like an idiot. Don't edit him out of context. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So we had posted that video, and then. It, it, the, the debate started because uh, Opterotomus and I are friends on Facebook and he posted a couple of photos of Hogan just basically whooping on the warrior and you're just you know all, uh, what was it what was one of them uh, Hogan gives the the big boot to the ultimate piece of trash and basically stuff like that now it sparked the debate because I was like well how are you such a big Hogan fan so he defends himself I defend the Warrior, not saying that I'm a Warrior fan all the way as not a Hogan fan, but it was just back and forth. Then a couple of other people jumped in, and it got really, emo- no, I wouldn't say emotional, but very uh, heated. very heated, which is the reason we're doing this podcast today. So with that in mind, Opterotomous, I want to ask you, well, what is it about Hogan that you choose over Warrior? Like, why do you defend Hogan so much the way you did on Facebook over the Warrior? Now, when you say personally, it's just like, you do know Hogan is not an angel either, right? Oh, I know. 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 I know.
I don't know what natal. So it's like, okay, well, how do you, like, I'm trying to think of how to put he, it. He's in. a fan of the persona. Okay. That he puts out, you know, say your prayers, eat your vitamins. Okay. That guy. Right. Well, and that's the case then, He because he was saying how Warriors doing a lot of personal shit that rubbed them the wrong way. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like, now the line is crossed and it's not just being a fan of the persona. Well, now, I, I have to say, as someone on the outside, because I really didn't pay much attention to this, I saw your guys' little Facebook squabble there, and I kind of stayed back. But, uh, we are talking about a guy whose name was originally James Brabant Helwig, and he goes and has his name legally changed to a one word name, Warrior. That's true. I mean, really? really? Yeah, you didn't know that? Yeah, I didn't know that. You really did that? The reason he did that was because uh, WWE was trying to, you know, sell stuff and say that we own the name, we own the name, and they weren't giving him royalties. Uh-huh. So he's just like, well, you can't own my name if it's my legal name. So he went literally and changed his government name to just Warrior. Because he's too much of a dumbass and signed a bad contract. Pretty much. So he got fucked because of his own stupidity, really. What do you mean? Well, if he wasn't intelligent enough to get a lawyer to look over his contract he signed with Vince to make sure that he was getting appropriately paid when he felt to get paid. So the wrong one is kind of his own stupidity. Yeah, I can say that. So, yeah, you can so say he that. runs out and changes his name to Warrior yeah. to try and correct this mistake. Yep. See, this sucks because I really thought I was going to be like middle road here. I didn't really have... But that's just asinine. <laughs> no, I agree. I agree. But my thing is, like, um, like, like you just said, because you called it, you pretty much pointed your finger on it. When you said Prime is a uh, an example, or he's a fan of the persona. Right. So that's like saying, okay, I don't like what Ultimate Warrior does behind the scenes, but he was cool in the ring. Whereas Hogan has done some really shady stuff behind the scenes, mm-hmm. and he was cool in the ring. So it's, now it's just like, you know, you're like you're not being fair. Like I don't like him. Back and forth. You well, you're like you're just saying like I don't like Warrior because he did this behind the well, scenes. Well, it's the same thing with Hogan and every other wrestler. Nobody behind the scenes is completely innocent. Firstly, from the five minutes I've taken to look at this, it seems like a lot of jealousy. Okay. In my opinion, on the Warrior's part towards Hogan, that he didn't that he was given the push by Vince, mm-hmm. but he didn't. You know, he dropped the ball. He, yeah, he, he fucked it up. Okay. You know, he didn't. John Cena it. So to speak. <laughs> but uh, how can you hate someone because they're more popular than you? I mean, I understand envy and things. Yeah. But if you're going to turn into like a mudslinging match on social media, ultimately, you're going to lose. Now, I'm, I want to go on record to say I'm not picking Warrior side over Hogan's. Because growing up, I mean, I don't care who you're a fan of now or what your opinion is of these people now. Back then, and we discussed this before, as a, as a kid... When you were watching the WWF, you, no matter what, you were a Hulkamaniac at one point in your life. Absolutely. You were a little warrior at one point in your life. You know, these guys were so larger than life, you could not help but be a fan. You know what I mean? Regardless of what they did outside the ring. Because let's face it, in the 80s, 90% of the wrestlers on the roster were on drugs. Yeah, no, they were definitely all roiding. You know? So, my thing is like, okay, where, where do you draw the line, Prime, when you're like, okay... Um, and I'm referring to your Facebook post where you're like, Warrior's a piece of garbage. Give me an example where Warrior is a piece of garbage over Hogan. The only reason I say that is because of the video interviews I, told you I did see with him, and he also posted on his own, and it was on YouTube where he was just talking trash about Hogan, saying, well, he did this, he did that, and everything else. And I've never once seen Hogan do that or, you know, turn around and make a video talk trash about the Warrior. And the words that they get up look really bad. And I agree with you know, what was said about you know, the jealousy thing. And that's what it was to me. And that's what I saw it as. And like back in then, watching the wrestle in the ring, yeah, that was what it was. But like, so when it came down to the whole game of the I was always backing home. Even when they wrestled at WrestleMania 106. Something like that. That's why we need John here. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, all right. Now, maybe Hogan didn't bash the Warrior, to my knowledge. But you do know that he bashed Macho Man, right? Right before he died? Yeah, I had heard something about that, yes. Yeah, there was a video online, where too, where he was just... The way that Warrior was bashing Hogan was pretty much the way Hogan bashed Macho Man. And then... No, that was... Uh, was that right before he died or right after he died? I don't remember. I just remember that though he, ca- he caught a lot of stuff on the Macho Man's behalf and people were just like, let's crucify Hogan. Like, you can't talk about somebody like that uh, who's dead? You know what I mean? 
Or like you shouldn't. You shouldn't. It's kind of distasteful to piss on someone's grave. Right. No, I agree. I agree. And then, you know, it's like, you don't think that Hogan's uh, persona has been tarnished at all, Prime? Have you watched TNA? No, uh, I just watch that much of wrestling now because they've got too many women in it, so I don't really watch it anymore. Um, dude, TNA is absolutely horrible. <laughs> Hogan. Hogan actually did nothing to help that company. Actually, him and Bischoff both. It's, it's not better than WWE that just recycles the same idea week in, week out, gives you the same match week in and week out. Keeps the same weak ass champion John Cena week in week out. No, because TNA is taking that week in week out stuff that WWE does, and they're copying now. Are they really? They're copying. Yeah, see, I don't watch TNA. They're copying WWE storylines bit for bit. Like AJ Styles' contract was coming to expiration, so what do they do? They have him win the title, and then he leaves the company. And now there's no champion, so they're having a tournament to determine a new TNA champion. And then when that happens, AJ's plan is to come back, and it's gonna be champion versus champion. Does that sound familiar to you? Yes. Yeah. Summer kind of, but I can't. WWE Summer of 2011, aka the Summer of CM Punk. Remember at Money the Bank, he beats Cena, he leaves. Cena, they have a tournament. Yeah, I, I, I didn't see that either. Was that right before his pipe bomb? That was yeah. No, that was after he drops the pipe bomb first. Okay. And then they go into the match at Money in the Bank in Chicago, no doubt, where Punk just beats the hell out of Cena. He leaves the company. At midnight, his contract expires. He leaves the company as champion. The following week on Raw, they're told they can no longer mention CM Punk by name. So they're going to have a tournament to determine a new WWE champion. Lo and behold, Cena wins. Super Cena. He wins. He becomes the champion. He's champion for about a week or so before CM Punk comes out with the new theme music. Nobody knows who it is because the music is playing on its own. Out walks Punk, champion versus champion at SummerSlam. The exact same storyline. Okay, but wouldn't you? Couldn't you also argue that the storyline currently in WWE is exact same as the corporate ministry back in the late nineties, two thousand? Devil worshiping. Well, yeah. Okay, minus the <laughs> devil worshiping, but the corporation aspect of it. The authority. You know, oh. What's best for business? Bullshit. Yes and no. Like, it doesn't seem a little tired and contrived to you? The whole company is. The whole company is. Because they take two or three people, make them stars, and those are the ones they focus on. Okay, so back, back so to yeah, Hogan we're getting Warrior. off subject. <laughs> back to Hogan Warrior, uh, as far as his, his him being tarnished, I feel like that that VH1 show he had... Hogan? ...kind of tarnished the image of Hulk Hogan a little bit. Well, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, you, you can go with... Um, the whole the whole divorce thing and how ugly that got. His son in the car accident. Uh, the porno tape the leak where he banged Bubba the Love Sponge's wife. Who? His his best friend Bubba the Love Sponge, the guy who's got the radio show. Oh. Um, there's a video of Bubba the Love Sponge and his wife in his bedroom, and then Hogan walks in. and He's like, "Oh, I got some work to do in the office. You guys have fun." And he leaves, and the camera's supposed to be hidden, and he Hogan bangs Bubba's wife. And then at the end, takes a phone call from one of Hook, uh, his daughter's friends. That sounds awfully, like, set up to me. It was. It was. Like, I mean, as uh, this is just, like, everyone was in on it, I'm saying. Right, no, they, that's how it was. Oh, okay. They, they knew the camera was hidden, and then, but the thing that was stupid was... So they so, tried to create controversy. Yeah, and the thing was that, for some reason, Bubba decided to, after the video was released, sue Hogan. Figure that one out. That's ridiculous. And it's not like a rumor, because I've actually seen this video, which I don't recommend anybody watching unless, you know, you swing that way. It's, it was just weird. It can't be any worse than One Night in China. Not that I've seen that either, but I've heard that her clitoris is, you know... Yeah, anyway, I've, I've seen that. I should <laughs> try and keep this kid friendly. Please keep... Well, too late now. <laughs> nice going there, Brian. Hey, whatever. For all the little kitties out there, never mind. I'm going to stop now. So, lately, there's been news, uh, rumors, because since because Hogan's TNA contract has expired, and the company's pretty much up for sale now. Oh, really? Yeah, you didn't know that? No. Yeah, the company's up for sale. The Carter family does not want to pump any more money into the TNA business. Um, they can't, they just, there was rumors saying, there was a, there was an expo not that long ago, 
where Triple H was in attendance along with Hulk Hogan. And uh, Triple H went, walked up to him, gave him a hug, and he says, hey, when are you coming back home? And um, so Hogan's like, I'd love to go back to the WWE. Let's talk. So supposedly they talked, but the money wasn't right. You know, TNA was going to offer him more. So obviously you go where there's more money. You know, it's, it, when you're trying to line your pockets, that's the number one thing to do. You know, when your wife just took you for every cent you had because she was banging a 19-year-old, you do what you got to do, right? <laughs> um, so, uh, TNA, this, uh, afterwards, they announced that uh, the company's up for sale. If the company's up for sale and the Carters aren't pumping any more money into it, how are you going to pay uh, Hogan? This is what I don't get. TNA kept Hogan and they kept Bischoff, but they fired a lot of their production crew and there's production members who are still working for free in order to get the product out. But you're so concerned with paying Hogan, who doesn't come on TV as much, because he can't. He can barely walk to the ring. Like, I, I don't get TNA's understanding of that. But um, the lead buyer right now for TNA, the rumor is, is uh, Billy Corgan from the Smashing Pumpkins. Because he's got his own uh, underground wrestling company. Really? Yeah. At one point, it was Hogan and Bischoff saying that they were going to buy the company. But then people started being like, well, remember that midget wrestling that Hogan promoted? That he started or whatever and tanked, so but um so yeah he was gonna go back to TNA, and uh, because of this now there's a verbal agreement that he will be returning to WWE. What do you think about wow. that? What do you think about that, Prime? Well, wow. I, I didn't ever see that happen, but uh, I think it comes with a shock to me because I didn't know about all this going on. I didn't know about TNA being up for sale, all that kind of stuff. So like, this is all new to me, and I'm just like, wow, that's crazy. Now he comes back to. Uh, I gotta. Do you still watch uh, wrestling right now, Prime, or no? Uh, I've got like some DVDs, you know, a bunch of old Undertaker matches, a bunch of the old Hulk Hogan matches, and stuff like that. But like as far as television wrestling now, I, I really don't watch anymore. Are you familiar with any of the current stars at all? Just a few of them. All right. Well, with the ones you know, say Hogan comes back. All right. You know, WrestleMania 30 is around the corner. What do you think should be Hogan's like swan song? Like, how do you see? How would you book Hogan? If he came back to WWE and you were in charge of taking care of the storyline, what would you go about doing? Uh, also, keep in mind that Vince McMahon and Ultimate Warrior have uh, mended their uh, their wounds and their buddy buddy again, and now Warrior's doing promo work for the video game for the company. <laughs> you all right there? With Hogan coming back to the WWE, and um, okay. and now Warrior mending his differences with Vince and stuff, so him kind of being on the WWE ship as well, sort of. Let's say you had creative control. What would you do? Like Hogan comes back to the company, they look at you and they say, "Optimus, you're in charge of uh, making sure Hogan gets uh, you know the chariot right out of the company that he deserves or whatnot." How do you go about doing that? What would you do? Well, no, they said he's coming back as a uh, signing a Legends contract, which basically entails that he's going to do a lot of promotion work for them, as well as possibly a few matches here and there. I honestly have to say, if they if Vince has got the Warrior back, which we know he does, because he's doing the WWE 2K14 commercials, yep. and Hogan coming back, that it would be a prime opportunity to give them a WrestleMania match. Well, they've had a WrestleMania match. Why not give them another? If not, then I mean, what else are they doing with the Warrior? Just promoting a video game? Yeah, I would say that's a waste of money. Just I mean, to that have seems like a, a waste of money to me. Because the game will sell itself. Really, it will. Even if it sucks, it'll still sell itself. I mean, they've been making them for a decade or longer. Right. If you're not going to do that, why not Hogan Cena? That's the rumor. Or Hogan Rock 2. Nah, I wouldn't Which I see don't that. really have any... I wouldn't want to see it. No. I have no desire to see Hogan versus Cena. It's like in, in a man, in a case like that, who do you put Hogan against? You know, why not make him a manager? Like like a GM? No, like a manager. Somebody's man. They, they, if you've noticed, there's really no managers. Yeah, there anymore. are no managers. Zeb Coulter is the only manager from the Real Americans. Yeah, he is the only the one. Colonel Sanders looking guy. Yeah, I know. I know who you're talking about. That guy's hilarious. I love we that guy. the people. Yeah, that guy. That's my boy. I hate those guys. So Prime, if you had to put Hogan in one more match, who would it be against? If I had to put him in one more match, who would it be against? Um, 
keep in mind it'll be let's say it's one of the top main events at WrestleMania 30. You know the big the big stage. Who would you put Hogan against? Oh, maybe somebody like The Rock. Really? It's The Rock Hogan yeah. too. Did you see their first match? Yes, I did. What did you think? I thought it was pretty good. It actually I was. I actually thought Hogan should have won too. A lot of people thought Hogan should have won. But see, I get what they were doing there. You know, they that was Hogan passing the torch, so to speak. You know, which is why I think at Rock Cena won. Rock should have won, or excuse me, Cena should have won. But they made you wait a whole year to have Cena win. Now that was the only time I was on board for Cena winning anything. Yeah, today I, I first of all, in my opinion, they need to hire new writers. They need to go in a whole new direction. They need to get rid of Freddie Prinze Jr. Yeah, they. They push the same guy month after month, year after year, and it's tiresome, man. Mm-hmm. It's not how it was when we were kids in the 80s. I mean, championship belts would change every month. Yeah. You didn't have guys having these epic year-long runs as champions. It's really kind of just bullshit. So, Prime, you say against Rock, huh? Yeah. I would look at him right now. What about you? Who would you, uh, who would you put Hogan against? Honestly? Yeah. I don't know. He's old. I have absolutely no desire to see Hulk Hogan wrestle anymore. Uh, if he wanted to come, you know, out and get his ass kicked by Damian Sandow, I'd pay to see that. <laughs> you know? You're welcome, WWE. <laughs> um, in all honesty, I don't think there's anybody on the current roster I'd like to see Hogan wrestle. Would I like to see him in the ring again? Sure, under the right circumstances. If you can build, with Hogan, if you can build a buzz the way you built around WrestleMania 18 when he fought The Rock, that, what, leading into it, it was interesting because it was the end. It was the end, yeah. It was the NWO angle, which actually got overshadowed by the fact that it was just Rock and Hogan, right? Which I think, believe it or not, is one of the one of my top five favorite matches of all time. If not just for the match, just for the, the the crowd passion, because that crowd was into it. Yeah, I mean, heavy. Um, and I, I'd have to say, you know, you you'd have to put Hogan in the ring with somebody who he's got a problem with, you know. Versus Cena? No, I don't care. I, I really yeah, don't. Because if care. Hogan wins. What does it do for Cena? Nothing. It's not going to tarnish his reputation at all. If Cena wins, what does it mean? Oh, you beat up a guy that can't walk to the ring in the first place, and he's already Super Cena. Um, Super Cena? Yeah, that's what he's been called, Super Cena, because it seems like he can do no wrong, and he wins damn near every match that he's in. It's just... Yeah, that's it. Well, you know, right, Cena is actually... And this is probably why I would only say put him against Hogan. Is because Cena is now known as the uh, the face of the WWE, the legit face. He is what Hulk Hogan was for the WWF yeah, back in the day. Yeah, generation. Yeah. Kids? Oh yeah. Yeah, he Absolutely. is the Hulk Hogan. But let's face it, every now and then, even Hogan lost. You know, Hogan Hogan picked the spots. Hogan knew, okay, if I drop the belt, it's good for business. You know, it's going to build this guy up, and this guy's going to be a star, and then I can come back. I'm already a star. It'll be star versus star. You know, it'll be a big, big draw. Whereas with Cena, it doesn't. People are so tired of him that it doesn't matter who he's fighting. Nobody wants to see the match, you know. Well, so I, this past pay per view, Hell in the Cell, what has Cena done for him to come back after two months of injury and get a title shot out of nowhere and, and win it? Title, yeah. And then to fuck a guy that's been carrying the money in the bank around for the past four months and retain the title. Yeah. Why? Why? What that does, though, is actually put, if you really think about it, it puts Sandow in the main event picture because he lost. So now he's going to go after that belt. He's going to be part of the chase. He's going to be part of the world heavyweight title. Uh, yeah, but then on. look what happens to people that become part of the chase. Look at Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler was part of the chase for a minute and then just dropped into Well, supposedly that's backstage issues is why. Because, oh, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of heat on him backstage. So they told, they basically, like, your attitude is crap. We're not pushing you anymore. That's That is his own fault. But it's well, sad because I like Ziggler. Honestly, back to the Hogan thing. If he's going to come back one more match, WrestleMania, the only person he's got problems with is the fucking Warrior. Like, how do you know that all this shit they're not doing right now? And look, I mean, it's creating talk. Obviously. How do you know they're not going to throw fucking Warrior Hogan, whatever the hell it will be? Well, would it be two? I don't even know what it would be. I'm sure they've wrestled way more times than that one time. You know who I'd like to have him fight just because they have never fought at WrestleMania? The Undertaker. I was going to say that would be good. I but think I'd have Hogan fight The Undertaker would, because The Undertaker's the undefeated streak versus the, the Hulkster. You know, it's like, okay, now, you got all of Hulkamania. Would you have Hogan break the streak? See, here's the thing. Neither one of them need to win this match to boost their popularity. Yeah, no. You know? And then if either one of them lose, it doesn't hurt their credibility or their popularity. You know what I mean? It's still a match that I'd like to see. 
if anything, what I would like to see is Sting versus Undertaker. But if you got to do Sting Hogan, then you have Sting Hogan go and or uh, excuse me, not Sting Hogan, uh, Undertaker Hogan, and then Sting makes his debut, interrupting that match. So basically, there is no winner. But you can't give me a five so minute match either. Uh, the undefeated streak stands, but it doesn't get any more ground. I mean, this could happen though, because Vince has been notorious about buying out his. His competitors when they're weak. Right. Well, the rumor WCW, is that WCW. him and him and Sting have been meeting a lot. Yeah. Lately, and they're just trying to find the right deal. That's all it is. It's just like just give them a legends contract. That's all you need to do. What about a legends contract? Basically, states you're getting paid X amount of dollars. You're getting this kind of DVD distribution deal. Right. You got to make X amount of appearances on TV, X amount of appearances in public, and you wrestle one or two matches. Now, in, in closing here, uh, if Sting doesn't come in. Now, Hogan's all kind of old, crotchety. You see, ever wrestled Stone Cold? Hogan and Stone Cold? No. That'd be a... I want to see that. Really? Hell yeah. What do you think, Prime? Hogan and Stone Cold? Yeah. Oh, boy, I don't know about that one. Isn't he a Texas boy? Yeah. He sh- you should all be for the Texas rattlesnake kicking some Hulk Hogan right up by the throat. <laughs> you know, it, it would be like my first wrestling love versus my last. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like... Hulk Hogan was my first hero of wrestling. Stone Cold Steve Austin was kind of my last. I'd love to see those two guys fight. Two titans in the ring. That's not a bad idea. Two men at the peak of their time were the top for the WWF. Right, right, right. What'd you say, Brian? I'm still back Hogan. You still back Hogan? Yes. All right, now, in a scenario between Hogan and Undertaker, would you have Hogan break the streak? I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. Because well, it was Survivor Series nineteen ninety. I know John will kill me if I get this wrong. Either ninety one or ninety two. Undertaker had just debuted. He was in the company. We, we for, needed our human wrestling encyclopedia here. Um, it was like he was there barely a year, and it was Survivor Series, I believe, and he had a title shot against Hogan, and he won the title. His first WWF championship was against Hogan, and that's when Hogan originally left the company. So I think it'd be like a kind of, uh, well, we haven't faced each other since I left the company, and you took the belt from me kind of thing. You could kind of play off of that. And they have the Warriors special guest referee. <laughs> Who would then ultimately screw over Hogan. Yeah, he would screw over Hogan. Warrior, or Warrior would screw over Hogan. And then the be, streak stays intact, and then but then... Hogan Warrior at SummerSlam. Yeah, Hogan Warrior at SummerSlam, but then Undertaker's <laughs> mad that uh, Warrior helped him keep the streak, yeah. so then uh, he sends him a choke slam and something like that. I don't know. I think there's something there to it. I think we should get paid for coming up with these we ideas. Should, we should be. <laughs> Warner Brothers and... Vince McMahon need to call us. Yeah. We'll make them money. We'll make money. Everybody's happy. No doubt. Well, Prime, we're pretty much out of time. I want to thank you for calling in and uh, joining us on this podcast. Uh, if you want to tell listeners one more time where they can find you and your work. Yeah, please plug away. Uh, I am Lisa Hunter Honest, and that is spelled with two P's on my YouTube channel because like that was a weird thing. I couldn't get it with one P. Uh, yeah, Hunter Honest, two P's on my YouTube channel. You can check out my reviews and people you know where to check us out at comicsremix.com the hub for everything we do the spinner rack the 101 comics remix uh you can check us all out on twitter uh actually twitter feeds are all on the page i think yeah for the most part well like i said comicsremix.com is the hub for everything your for your comic uh remix needs all our shows are on there all our links are on there check us out um and if you have any questions comments concerns you can email us at comicsremix at gmail.com so uh, I guess for another issue of the Spinner Rack, I'm uh, I'm Junior, co-host of Comics Remixed. I'm not done. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's because I'm cutting you off. Bitch, shut up. This is my show. <laughs> All right, well, you go ahead and do it. <laughs>
As always, I'm joined by junior co-host You're Jones? Thomas Remix. I'm Jones. Nigga, I'm Jones. Sorry. <laughs> As always, I'm joined by junior co-host of Comics Remix and co-host of the Spinner Rack, our special guest. Out to my Optimus Prime. Check out his YouTube page, his Facebook. Hit him up on Twitter. And I'm your host, Big B. Brian Adams. See you next week. Good night, people.